My boyfriend secretly moved his family into my house and thought I wouldn't find out. For context, I, a 28 year old female, inherited a holiday home from my grandma some time ago. I never really use it as it's roughly a five hour drive out from London where I live. It's relevant to the story that the keys to the holiday home are on a rack with literally every other key to anything my boyfriend or I own. The holiday house has a security system hooked up to my phone and when it detects someone on the property, the cameras turn on and I can see them. My boyfriend's brother, who's 33, recently had his fourth child. Him and his wife currently live in a two-bedroom apartment. So, three days ago, they were both over at mine and my boyfriend's house with all their kids. We were talking about anything and everything. I was holding the baby. My boyfriend's brother eventually mentioned how I have my holiday home and how it has more than enough space for him and his wife to raise their four kids. My exact response was, yeah, but I'm not going to let you live there. So, and he went quiet after that and his wife started to collect their kids and their things. They left about 10 minutes after. My boyfriend hasn't said anything to me about the conversation, yet I'm feeling bad about my response because I know that they really do need the space. So, fast forward to yesterday. I wake up for work and realize my boyfriend isn't in bed with me. Nothing out of the ordinary. He works from 8.30am. When I'm finally about to walk out the door, I go to grab my keys and I notice that my holiday home's keys are gone. I look around for them and I can't find them, so I call my boyfriend. The first time, he doesn't answer. The second time, he doesn't answer. Third time, he does. The conversation went, Hey, have you seen my other house's keys? Uh, yeah, I have them. Cool, why have you got them, though? I grabbed them by accident. I'll return them when I'm back from work. I thought everything would be fine, so I continued with my day and went on to work. Midway through my work day, I get a notification from the house's security system. I open it and find my boyfriend, his brother, and his family all outside the door with a moving van in the back. I was fuming. When I got home, my boyfriend was already there, acting as if everything was normal. I started screaming at him, asking why the heck he'd move a family into my house without my permission. He tried to justify it and said he had to help his family. It honestly just made me even more angry. I told him that we were over. He had one day to get his brother and his family out of my house or I'd call the police on them all for trespassing. So that all happened at around 6 yesterday, about 14 hours ago. He hasn't called me or anything, but I fully intend to go through with my threat. But I know they're really struggling right now. So update. By searching through the UK government's website, I've managed to figure out what I can legally do. I've also called the police on them already. I haven't received any updates on that yet, but I'll share them when I can. Okay, another update. I called the police a small while ago. About 30 minutes ago, they came and returned my keys and let me know that the family have been told to leave by the cops. At first, they refused, but eventually they packed up their things and went. My ex-boyfriend, his brother, and his brother's wife have been blowing up my phone asking me why the heck I'd put them and their children through this. I've blocked them all. I feel absolutely terrible about what I did, and I know there was probably a better way to handle the situation. I even considered letting them stay there after all, but I'm not sure they'd pay rent or anything. For the future, I plan to rent the home out, as many of you suggested, but I'm not sure how ex-boyfriend's family would take that. I've had better security systems installed on the house and locks changed. Thank you to everyone who gave me advice at the time, it helped me get through it mentally. So, would I be the jerk for calling the cops? Alright, well, it's a bit harsh on your end, but ultimately it is your property and they all plotted together to deceive and leech off of you without your permission. That's not an environment of trust and even though I think it was fair of them to ask, it was absolutely within your right to say no. And you're absolutely right to dump your partner for going through such an elaborate deception despite living with you and likely having plans of deepening your relationship in the future. I can also understand feeling terrible about turfing them out on their butts. A family of six is a lot to tip out of a home, but they shouldn't have put you in that position to begin with. Honestly, the fact that they dropped the conversation after one try means that they likely knew that their brother's girlfriend was a bit of a tenuous connection to just go seeking full-time free room and board from. Maybe he can move in with them and together with their combined incomes they can get something better since he's clearly so willing to go above and beyond for them. 
So yeah, it does feel a little bad talking about displacing a family with four small children under the circumstances, and the narrator is likely enough of a pushover that he might have said yes to their first request, even if he didn't want to. I'm just saying that the author was definitely well within her right to say no. Cops called after already being served. So a bit of background, as it'll help to understand. I just turned 19 a couple of months back, and it was just the end of finals for uni. It's safe to say that I've had a stressed month, and I just wanted to go out for a couple of beers with my friends. Now, normally we'd just go to the campus pub since it was just after our last final for social work, but we decided to switch it up a bit. So we sit down after getting off the bus and finding a decent bar with some good Friday deals. We're already a couple of beers in, and I was kind of surprised that I haven't been asked to see my ID, as I look a lot younger than I am. But I wasn't worrying about it. Then the bartender noticed where the beers were going. It's important to note before I go on that our provincial licensing agency had just switched up the way our licenses look, and our secondary photo was no longer see-through, but now had a little scratchy holographic part on the bottom right-hand corner. The bartender said to me, Hey, can I see your ID for a moment? And me, thinking nothing of it, handed it over casually as I took a drink, and said, Of course. The bartender looks over it closely, and I should mention that it's a valid government-issued driver's license and I'd just renewed it on my birthday, as per provincial standards. Do you have another piece of ID that I could see? At this point, my friends had gone quiet and stopped the conversation completely. They didn't actually say anything during this encounter. I said, no, my driver's license is the only ID that I actually carry on me. He went quiet as he left my ID on the counter and just went into the back. I already had an idea as to what he was doing, so we started to gather our things and finish our drinks since we'd already paid for them. No tabs were allowed on the weekend without a credit card. We did take our time, yes, but we were all curious as to how this would play out. About 10 minutes passed and the next thing we knew, the cops were inside the bar. We just rolled our eyes at each other as the bartender came up to the table with them. I can't remember what exactly was said, but pretty much the bartender thought my ID was a fake and decided to call the cops on me. After I sat in the back of a car for a bit and my friends were told to go home, I was finally let go almost an hour later after they verified everything was real. What annoyed me the most was the fact that I'd already been served three drinks at the time, and they didn't bother to ID me before that. So instead, they tried to cover their butts and say my ID was fake to avoid the fine, as it's supposed to be, look under 25, expect to be carded. In short, bartender IDs me after I'm three beers in, then decides to call the cops and claim my ID is a fake since he's never seen the changes to the ID in order for him to avoid a fine against the bar. I have my liquor license now and I'm a bartender on weekends, and the way it was all handled was just sketchy in itself. And you can bet that I ratted the bartender out for serving me before seeing my ID. The bar is still up and running as I went to visit my uni city this past weekend, although apparently it's run by different owners now. Am I the jerk for ratting them out after what they did to me? Yeah, this is all a big no-no. Personally, I wouldn't have bothered, but I can totally understand that you wanted a bit of payback, and honestly, if they're behaving that shiftily all the time, maybe they need some retraining on how to serve beverages and the proper current forms of ID. Probably a little embarrassing for them that they demonstrably couldn't identify a modernized ID from you to begin with. <laughs> well, the important thing is that that bartender is probably no longer serving, at least in that establishment. This all feels a little low stakes to me, like like they clearly did realize that they'd maybe screwed up and tried to carry out a fix of sorts, but it's all just sort of botched. To be kept in hindsight for the other side, if the author and her friends looked like they were leaving, maybe just let them go and pray the cops don't show up and ID them next time. It honestly seems like a panicked reaction though, so I can't judge too harsh. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, linked below. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Tell me to cover up in my own yard? Be beholden to my thighs every summer. So this is more of an annual revenge thing. About five years ago, a greedy councilman put up three two-story apartments next to our house. One of these has a direct view of our pool area and a grouchy woman and her husband moved into it. Anywho, as we've done in the 15 summers before they got there, we all went for an afternoon swim. The woman was on her balcony and made a huge dramatic fuss about going back inside and closing her curtains. 
She then screeched at her husband when he tried to go outside. It's not like we were indecent or anything, just in our swimsuits. We laughed about it and continued having a nice afternoon at the pool while she roasted inside. A few days went by and I decided it was too hot to be inside and went for a dip. I was in the middle of uni and this was the only time I'd leave the house between assignments and tests. Now, I don't have a body that stops traffic. I'm a regular, plump human whose Dorito-loving habits have begun to show around the lower body area. I take off my sarong and jump into the pool. After a few minutes, I sense someone watching me. I look up and find a man on my balcony smoking and staring right at me. I make a bit of an aggressive, what, gesture, and he scurries back inside, only to return with the woman in tow. The conversation went something along the lines of, Excuse me, could you not swim when my son is out here smoking? He lost his job and this is the time he'd normally smoke, and you're out here exposed and distracting him. Ugh, he's the age of my dad. He can smoke on your front balcony. And I've lived here for, at the time, 15 years, so you can't blame me for being here exposed, which I'm not, by the way, I'm swimming. I'm just asking you to be considerate, okay? At this point, the grown man-baby was just looking smug. And I said, if you don't like it, then move. So I continued swimming. They stood there for another five minutes before once again going inside and closing the sliding patio doors and curtains. Also, I wasn't exposed or indecent. I wear full swimsuits because I'm a little insecure about my belly. See what I said about the Doritos for reference. I told my parents and the next day my mum joined me in the pool to show them and I quote, what real traumatizing thighs look like. But that got me thinking though. I could make their summers a living hell if closing all their curtains was how they went about seeing us in the pool. So now, every summer, weather permitting, I go out and flash my thighs for a few hours in the afternoon and have them roast up in their apartment. It's been five years of this and I'll continue doing it until the day I leave home. It did get to me at first, but then I realized what perverts they were for watching me swim. I live in South Africa. If they called the police, the officers would proceed to laugh at them and tell them where to get off. I should start skinny dipping again in that case. As a late update, I want to thank everyone who's giving me ideas to be even more petty. My mum and I are getting a good chuckle out of it, and I'm now on Amazon looking for the hairy dude swimsuit. There are also some great suggestions about getting every male in my family a Borat-style mankini in fluorescent green. I think they'd all be down for this. Maybe I could start off with my cousins and brother, and then bring in my uncles for an end-of-season fiesta. Also, everyone's been so wholesome about this. My Dorito thighs give thanks for the acceptance. As long as they're there, I'll torture them. This is my villain origin story, and I can't go back on it now. <laughs> Excellent. What hyper-moral cult did these weirdos spring from in that swimming in the pool that you own in anything less than a full robe wasn't to be expected? Also, the fact that you saw the quote, son, and thought he was her husband is not a flattering image of him, although I suppose we can hardly criticize them for their looks, the narrator said, recording that thought anyway. Honestly, this is right up there with any number of weirdos who are somehow averse to the natural shapes of other people, particularly women. If you can't see women in bathing suits without your mortal soul spontaneously plummeting into the deepest depths of depravity, that says a lot more about you than it does about the ladies who honestly just want to cool off in the pool. I'm completely on board with you going above and beyond to flaunt what you got even more now that they've revealed their squirmish position on the matter. And I dearly hope that you can actually get your wacky costume ideas together. And please tell us about it here on the channel too. We all dearly want to hear how these Puritan souls react to the parade of horrors unfolding outside their balcony. <laughs> The worst human I've ever met. So, this happened yesterday. I'm not working at the moment, but I've been trying to keep myself busy by offering help to the people in my family and friend circles, giving them lifts, helping them move, among other things. All in all, I consider myself a pretty generous person. Yesterday, my younger brother finally managed to get a few days off work, and he was going up the coast with some friends for a nice relaxing getaway for one of their birthdays. He asked me weeks before if I could give him a lift, as he had chef school that day and wouldn't be able to get a lift to the house with his friends as planned. I said, sure, no problems. The day comes around and I pick him up early as he finished quickly, and we got on our way. The drive wasn't bad, it took about one and a half hours, and we just chatted and listened to music all the way there. 
It was a nice drive. At this point, it was around 4.30pm by the time I dropped him off and turned around to go home. I got probably halfway home and I saw someone parked up by the side of the road, waving me down. So I decided to pull over as a few cars ahead had already driven past without stopping. And they dodged a bullet. Enter the entitled parent and her piece of crap kid. Entitled parent, a woman, looks at me and says, Can I help you? I looked confused as she had waved me down. Um, I thought you maybe needed some help. Is everything okay? Uh, no. We ran out of petrol. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a pretty easy fix. The next town I knew had a service station as I passed it on the way there, and it was only another five kilometers up the road. I said, I can drive you into the town to get petrol and bring you back here. Okay, she says simply, while her son was picking up some gravel by the roadside and throwing it into traffic on a 60 mile per hour highway. I said, hey, don't do that, champ, that's dangerous. And she'd got to her car to grab her purse, but reeled out of it as I said that. Don't you dare speak to my son like that. She snapped angrily. I said, sorry? I got into my car, followed quickly by the obnoxious pair, highly regretting my life choices by this point, now feeling that I can't redouble on myself given how difficult she's been at me helping her. She sits down and immediately scoffs, looking at her feet. Why is your car so dirty? Um, oh, sorry, I used to put my work boots down there, so it kind of got dirty over time. You know, you could clean it up. I laughed nervously and just nodded, pulling away and wanting this to be over as fast as possible. I left my phone in the center console and she grabs it. Can I call someone? My phone ran out of charge and that's why we were stuck out there. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I have unlimited calls, so I didn't really care. Either she thinks the person on the other line can't hear her or she's trying to contact them without the use of the phone because she is shouting. Meanwhile, her son was leaping up between the two front seats, looking out the front window. I quickly slowed down in a bit of a shock. Whoa, put your seatbelt on, dude. The mother just glances at him and pushes him onto the back seat, and I have to tell him to put on his seatbelt again before he actually does. I'm freaking seething by this point, but I could already see the town ahead and she had thankfully only had a short conversation and put my phone back. We pulled up to the pump without issue, but she sits there for about 10 seconds giving me this quick sideways glance with her arms folded, and I didn't even have to ask if this b-word wanted me to go and get the gas for her. I knew she did. And then I think. I didn't know if it was going to work, but I wanted to try and here I am. I got out of the car and grabbed a 5 litre jerry can they had for sale, holding it up for her approval and she nods. I fill it up and walk up to the passenger side door and open it. She says, what? Oh, I just wanted to know if your son wanted to pick out an ice cream. I know it's hot today. She looked shocked for a moment and for the first damn time, she smiled. The kid practically leapt out of the car and much to my happiness, so did she and followed him in there. I walked in, put the jerry can onto the counter as he quickly comes up with his ice cream. Then I said, oh, one second, I left my phone in the car. It has my debit card in it. I smile as soon as my back was turned to them got into the car and casually drove off, relishing in the sight of her running out of the service station, screaming who knows what profanities. All in all, it only ended up costing me about 20 minutes of my time, but the feeling I got as I drove away was priceless. I wonder how long it took them to get back to their car. I got home fine, with a solid gold story in tow to tell my family. Best drive ever. I only hope the poor guy running the servo didn't cop it too badly from that crap storm of a human. This is truly majestic. And once again, you are a bit of a jerk in this one instance, but honestly, as long as you're inflicting it on specimens like her, I really don't mind. And it seems like you'd built up a fair bit of good karma by driving your friends and family around, so maybe you would do a bit of satisfaction. My only point of contention is that you screwed the kid a bit too, and it sounds like he didn't have a great role model or anything, and as usual I'll tend to hold them off on any blame until they've hit adulthood. But back to the main villain of our story. What the frick was going on in this lady's head that she seemed so comfortable and unapologetic with just expecting everything from this good Samaritan as if it were her majesty's proper Jew? At least have some shame to pretend you left your wallet in the car. Was this a grift? Is this how this woman moves from town to town in order to concoct schemes to mooch off locals and trick restaurants into giving her free food with Karen-like claims of outrage over service and meals? We can only send our thoughts and prayers to the gas station attendant that the author abandoned her with. 
We hope you called the cops when she inevitably made all of this your problem. Thanks for watching, folks. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want to check out some great music, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.